today on the Luke Loses Podcast, Pain and Progression with Carrie McCabe. I talk to Carrie, a stand-up comic. He tells me how fear and the loss of a loved one motivated him to lose 140 pounds. I hope you enjoy it. What's up, losers? I am Luke, and this is Luke Loses. We're losing the weight, we're losing the unhealthy lifestyle, and we're losing that negative image we have for ourselves. Please remember that I have no fitness or nutrition education. Everything I talk about is from asking questions, searching the internet, and my own personal experiences. Check out my website. It is www.lukeloserspodcast.com. That's got my social media as well as other places where you can listen to this podcast. You can also call the loser line, which is 323-920-LUKE or 5853. Now with that being said, let's just hop right in to today's episode. What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Luke Loses Podcast. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. If you missed last week's episode, check that out. It's called Why Keep Going? And I talk about my why. And I talk a lot about self-hate. And I looked up ways to combat that struggle that so many people have with self-hate. So check that one out. As for today's episode, I interview Carrie McCabe. He's also known as Carrie That Weight on Instagram and Facebook. He's a stand-up comic and he's he's local. Actually, I, I met him on a weight loss support group and found out that he was local. I went and seen him do some stand-up live. It was awesome and we had an awesome connection. I asked him to come on and he said he would love to do it. So here it is. All right. So today on the show, I have Carrie McCabe. He's also known as Carrie That Weight on Instagram. I came across him in a weight loss support group for men, saw his picture, was like blown away, and then found out he's a stand-up comic as well, and he's from Michigan. So I, I got I was fortunate enough to be able to go meet him doing one of his shows. Kerry, why don't you introduce yourself, man? Hey, thanks for having me, Luke. I appreciate it. Uh, I am Kerry McCabe. Uh, I am from Lansing, Michigan. I currently live in Dansville, Michigan, which is a little podunk town uh, about 25 miles southeast of Lansing. It's a real small, like population Dan. <laughs> so, um, I've been here for about 12 years. Um, bought a house out in the middle of nowhere and, and ended up being a blessing. And uh, I've used these country roads to to run and walk and lose a lot of the weight. So. Um, it's uh it's been a journey <laughs> yeah so the the picture that i saw on facebook in the support group was you doing stand-up and you were a big guy and then the next picture like we we just talked about it before we started recording how small you are so you were you were upwards of 325 and now you're about 185 and i was telling you like it's this may sound shitty to say but like you look like a normal person you know, like an everyday person, just small, skinny guy walking the streets. Like I could not imagine you being 325 seeing you now. Blows my mind. Thanks. Yeah. I, it's um I've struggled with my weight all my life. And I'm sure we'll get into this more, but um I still struggle with seeing myself as small as I am now. Um, some days I feel like I'm too small. I, I like start questioning whether I look peak. Um, but I mean, I, I don't, I just, uh, it's like such a drastic difference compared to what I did look like before. You're right. I mean, I do have a lot of people say, you know, I, I wouldn't have ever known you were such a big guy ever. So I must carry it. Uh, I must've carried it well, or I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and like I, I'm always seeing you in the gym. Uh, you call it your your lab, right? Or is that what you yeah. call it? the lab? Yeah. And I mean, seeing you, like you, you look amazing. Congratulations on the loss, dude. That that's awesome. What what did you do to uh, lose the weight? And like, what was that that turning moment that you were like, I gotta I gotta cut some of this weight off? 
Um, well, throughout my entire life, I battled with this weight. I would gain and lose and gain and lose. And part of that was because I have bipolar 2 disorder. I didn't know that until a few years ago when I got diagnosed with it. But um, I basically go through states of mania where I'm feeling really on top of the world and I get stuff done. I'm more productive. And then I go through long states of depression where I just turn to food and uh, other crutches and just get lazy <laughs> and gain the weight back. But um, in, uh, I think it was uh, 2016, the end of 2016, uh, my old band member, uh, I, who was a bassist of my band, Summer Dying, um, he had passed away in his sleep. And uh, he was morbidly obese. He was uh, upward to 500 pounds. I don't know exactly where he was at when he passed. But um, he was 36 years old, passed mm -hmm. in his sleep. And uh, that shook me to my core. I'll never forget. I, I mean, I, I remember every single detail. My uh, guitarist, Tim, who is also my brother-in-law and lives like right around the corner from me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, he called me over and over, which is not normal. And uh, it was uh, in January, and uh, of uh, it was actually 2017, January 2017. And um, I got a call as I was just getting ready to use the bathroom at work, and and I saw that Tim had called me several times, so I picked up and I was like, "What's up?" And he told me Bob died. Uh, his name was Bobby Lee Bryant. And he also had like YouTube videos of himself doing uh, weight loss stuff. Uh, he was trying to get out of, uh, you know, that trap he was in. And uh, he was working on losing the weight and everything. But uh, yeah, he just passed away in his sleep and it really shook me. And right that day, as soon as I got off the phone with him, I, I started walking. And, you know, we live in Michigan, shitty winters. And I didn't, I didn't let that stop. I just got out and started walking. And I, I got, I used to have an old Fitbit. I dug that out, started doing Fitbit challenges. Um, the first 60 pounds I lost was just from walking. No. So I didn't change anything about my diet. I didn't really uh, focus on that at all. I just focused on, I got to move more. I got to move more. So I, 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 have, I come from the school of small changes compound over time instead of like trying to make a bunch of, because that's one of the reasons why I, I would yo-yo so much. I um, would try and make too many changes all at once and they wouldn't stick. It became too overwhelming. So eventually what I did was like, all right, I, I'm just going to focus on getting out, walking every single day. I'm going to try and hit 10,000 steps. And then I started doing the weight loss challenges. So like on Fitbit, they have um, Work with Hustle, and they have Weekend Warrior, and they have different um, things. And I met a bunch of strangers on there and just started doing these competitions. And in the thick of it, I was averaging 35,000 steps a day. Wow. Yeah, I would walk every waking moment that I could. So I would get up early, early, early and walk at least an hour before work. And then I'd walk on both of my 15-minute breaks. And then I'd walk on my lunch hour. I'd walk the entire lunch hour. Um, and then I would walk when I get got home from work. And, uh, the, it just, like, it was something easy on my joints. And it felt like something that was really in my control and something that I wanted to master. Just get down the habit of walking every single day. And once that became habit, then I was like, I eliminated soda. And started eliminating sweets and stuff like that. Just tackling little things here and there. And I mean, now, nowadays, I, um, with, the, with the exception of occasional splurges i i eat fairly healthy i mean i eat like we buy from farms and uh farmers market and stuff like that try and support local farms and farmers market eat fresh organic food i don't know if i'm talking too much on one to topic oh no this is this is good stuff man 
I'm, I'm sorry about your friend. And like with, with that, like fear motivates fear is an awesome motivation. Um, it's unfortunate that it takes that for, for it to motivate us into getting our ass in gear, you know, definitely now. So you, you mentioned the band you've, you've done that. You've, you know, you do stand up. What, uh, I, I, this is kind of new for the, the podcast. I've never really went into this stuff, but I think it's awesome that you do your stand up. And when I went and seen you like it, it, you had a lot of stuff that related to your weight and, and your size and stuff. So does, does that help you? I guess, does that help you write jokes with, with how big you were and what you were, what you are now? And, uh, does it kind of keep you in check? Um, well, when I, when I originally did stand up, so I did stand up from 2014, to 2017. And then I, um, and that's when I gained a ton of weight. I, I gained a lot of weight. Cause like that was, um, like I had lost a bunch of weight before, uh, and then I gained it and I lost and I was, uh, definitely gaining tons of weight while I was doing stand up. Um, I was already kind of big when I first started, but I got really big. I gained probably a hundred pounds in the first year doing stand up. Wow. And that was partially the late nights, uh, being in bars, drinking, uh, being in bars, eating bar food or eating fast food or and just slamming monsters, getting like three to four hours of sleep a night. Cause so I was getting on stage like four to five nights a week. Um, it was just, it wreaked havoc on my, uh, on my health both mentally and physically. And um, while I was doing the stand-up, I um, did have a few fat jokes, but I, I honestly did avoid it because being fat was something I was kind of ashamed of. Yeah, You know, I think a lot of fat people are ashamed of it, you know? But um, at the same time, I had come to a you know point where I was just like, well, this is who I am. This is, you know, this is just who I am. I'm not going to talk about you know because to me i looked at that's like a, a real easy target you know i'm a fat person you're already thinking these things let's la- laugh about it out loud so i had a few jokes but overall i tried to avoid that topic a lot um and i do talk about it a bit in my new set now that i've lost the weight um i don't know that it necessarily keeps me accountable but uh, I don't think that I thought about it that way, but now that you mention it, it's like, if I want to keep those jokes in my set <laughs> yeah. or keep going in that direction, I do have to keep the weight off. So that's, that's a good point. Um, I was also in bands. I did, I was in bands from, uh, 96 to, uh, 2007 ish. I'm in a band again, but we're, our drummer just left. He's going to be moving, um, up North the UP. He uh, got a really good opportunity, so that kind of broke up the band again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, even when I was in bands, I struggled with the weight. I'd be, I'd get really fit for a little while. Uh, and when I say really fit, I've never been as fit as I am now. So <laughs> that's um, like really fit was different back then for me. Um, I was just, I didn't have a huge belly. And then eventually I did, like towards the end of the summer dying days, I was working overnights at Target, stocking shelves and uh, doing the band stuff on the weekend. So I also wasn't sleeping. I was eating terribly. When I worked at Target, I used to go downstairs on my lunch hour and buy an entire pack of Oreos and a half gallon of milk. And I would eat two of the the rows, you know, two of the sleeves of the Oreo that my lunch and then i had the other two sleeves the next day and wow. i had to drink half a gallon of yeah it was just terrible 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 choices and some of those uh pictures from my band days i look at those and i feel like i look pregnant then too <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that feeling of like smashing on stuff like the, the oreos and i've talked about it before with uh you know sneaking out on my way to get my wife and my kids food I'll sneak out and grab, you know, McDonald's smash that and then come home and eat the pizza that I just picked up for the family. Like I heard that on one of your episodes. I, I cause I listened, I binged your, your show before being on here. Cause I did want to get a feel for how you, you do it. And, uh, you know, obviously I want to support you and you've got a great thing going. I, I love your podcast and I did hear that story. And when you were telling that story, I was like, Oh man, can I relate to that? You know? <laughs> Yeah. Like 
even even now that I've lost the weight, sometimes I I'm guilty of that. Like um, occasionally, my wife will be like, "I don't feel like cooking. Do you, can you pick up something?" And um, I'll get all of the meals that we plan to get, but I'll also get an extra sandwich and I'll smash that sandwich before I get home. Yeah. The, um. Yeah, I still struggle even at this weight with emotional eating. So it's not like those struggles ever go away you just have to learn to um, be more aware of them uh and when they happen you know don't beat yourself up to the point where you uh you, you mess up and you just gotta um you gotta admit to it hold yourself accountable but also show yourself passion i think that's really important to not beat yourself up I understand where some people are coming from with the beating yourself up. I used to feel this way. I felt like I had to do that to hold myself accountable. But sometimes it just felt so hard and so bad that I would just give up. So I'm this time around, I've just really stressed the forgiveness. And then, like, instead of saying, I'll get back on track Monday, I'll get back on track now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, the, what I, I, I could, say, all right, I just ate all this food and then say, well, fuck it. I'm just going to eat all this food until Monday now, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And give uh, the permission to do it over and over and over. Uh, I'm kind of struggling with that a little bit right now, uh, to be quite honest with you, but uh, I do have a plan um, and I have been getting, making um, small little changes here and there. I got out and ran yesterday morning. I made sure I got that done. Uh, I fasted on Friday until dinner time. I mean, I got, I've been getting out and getting my minimum 10,000 steps. And then Monday, I'm going to get back out to the lab, out to my garage and start lifting again. That's great, man. Now, you just ran a 5K, didn't you? I did. Yeah. How was that? Like, was that your first 5K or no? Uh, it was my first 5K since losing all the weight. I did a five, I did a color run um probably around like seven or eight years ago in one of my stages when i was thinner yeah. um i i've never done them regularly this year the one that i was um, scheduled to do they canceled the in-person race because of covid yeah so that's that's one of my goals and i talked to you about this when i met you about doing the the 5k that's uh i don't know it's not it's not much you know it's like what 3.2 miles or something um but for you know fat get people like you know somebody like me i've never done that so i'm excited and i don't know if i mentioned it to you but i heard of a run in grand rapids it's a zombie run and like where they have people dressed as zombies that chase you through the streets at night and that's your 5k that's that's one thing i would love to do i'm big into zombies and and all that so i think that would be awesome maybe we could both sign up together and do it yeah that'd be cool yeah that'd be fun scared and and fun yeah yeah so how is that are you doing the couch to 5k program i i haven't started i actually started working with a coach recently and i've been you know he's got me meal plans he's got me you know a a shopping list you know like if if i need to do snacks throughout the day i should try doing this he's got a workout routine all that and it's it's great i love it i've worked with coaches before and It just, it makes it easier for me because I don't want to let them down. You know, I don't want to have to tell them, Hey, I, you know, I binge ate today, (laughs) you know? So it, it kind of works in my, my mind the way that I want it to, but I haven't, I haven't tried the, the 5k stuff yet, but I do have the app. I'm going to get it, get going to it. I just haven't. And I'm sure you've said that before. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Right. Yeah, I, I'm guilty of that, too. Um, what I would suggest is if you do start it off and um, you do week one, week one is going to be the easiest. If that's that, if that's all you can do, continue doing week one until you feel like you can move on to the next. Don't feel like you have to progress as fast as they tell you. You can keep repeating the, the same yeah. week over and over. Um, that's what I did in the beginning because, honestly, I would get real bad shin splints. When you're, when you're heavier, it's really hard. <laughs> on your body yeah. to run yeah and uh, i had a i had a buddy tell me i should do trail running uh he says the trails are a lot better on on our joints being bigger than uh running on the street 
the thing I would worry about that and, and like twist my ankle because yeah. uh, I do um, walk trails a lot. Uh, that's something my wife and I like doing. And um, I've just about twisted my ankle just walking them. So I, <laughs> yeah. walking, I did do a little bit of trail running once and I almost bit it. And my, a lot of my friends say they bite it when they trail run. So I don't, I don't know that I agree with that because just because of that, that risk factor, I prefer a paved road. So that way I can see what's, you know what I mean there? Yeah. But uh, I ran on a track on Saturday, uh, like up at a high school, at the high school. And um, I went faster than I ever have. I did the, I did that. And, but it was the most boring thing ever. <laughs> I was like, counting the laps. How many laps do I have to do? You know, like I counted how long it took me to do the first lap. And then I kind of did the math. You know, I'm running for a half hour. I got to do this many laps. And yeah. that was uh, so boring. <laughs> Well, that's got to be almost a torture, like figuring that out. Like uh, I did an episode talking about sleep and it says when you wake up in the middle of the night, don't look at your phone because then yeah. you start calculating, well, if I fall asleep right now, I'll get four more hours of sleep. And I'm, it's probably something like that, you know, like, all right, right I, I only have to do this much more. It seems like, I don't know. It feels like that would torture me. <laughs> it is a little bit torturous, but at the same time, it gives me like a, um, okay, I can do this. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, two more laps to go. I can do this. Yeah. It, it was a little bit of uh, in between and my headphones were dying. So uh, <laughs> I was like, no, don't let the music. I, that's one thing I really hate is running uh, w without music because then you're just listening to yourself panting. <laughs> I want to, I want to ask you about your photo shoot you did recently. Uh, for those that don't know, I seen you post a question on your I think you, it was on your Facebook asking about how to do your hair without cutting it. And for those that can't see you, your hair is about down to your chest. You've got the, the Lemmy sideburns, big old chops. And your question was how to do your hair like Wolverine without cutting it. Right. Then, then recently I saw those pictures pop up and it was you as Wolverine. That's badass, dude. I love it. Thanks. That was for that five. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a superhero 5K that we uh, you were supposed to dress up like a superhero when you did it, but obviously because the in portion, uh, in person portion got canceled, uh, I didn't have to do that. But um, they did still have a photo contest, so that's why we did those. That's awesome, man. So, well, have you ever have you ever done like comic cons and stuff? No, but my wife is a photographer, and we just like do silly. Uh, their photo shoots. Um, I did a Thor one not too long, uh, like about a year ago. Yeah. Um, I dressed up Thor for Halloween, and we did a Thor photo shoot. Um, I did a Lemmy photo shoot not that long ago. Uh, I got a cowboy hat, like cowboys. Your uh, I shirt love. And I love that shirt. We just man. do. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it too. I love it so much. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Because the first one I got when I was heavier, and then I, I was like, well, I want to get one that fits me. So I got a, a, an identical of the other one. That one fits me much better. Yeah. That's my that's one of my issues is like like the hoodies, right? So I'm wearing a hoodie now. I absolutely love hoodies, jackets, and shoes. Those are my my three things that I would spend all my money on if I could. So every time yeah. I lose like 10 pounds, I'm like, I got to go get a new hoodie. Got to go get a new jacket ridiculous but i love it so I'm, i got a closet yeah it's a good reward for yourself you know when you you lose that weight and you feel like oh i need to go down a size that's so uh, such a rewarding feeling yeah i remember one of the most memorable things for me was going through like four or five belts i'd buy a belt and then next thing i'd be watching that notch go down and down and down and then i'd be like poking my own holes into the and then got to a point where too too long you know what I mean? It's like flapping <laughs> on this one side. Yeah. Um, so I'd have to get a new belt. And I just, that was something that just felt so, uh, it, it made me feel so proud. Yeah. And it felt like such an accomplishment. I, I paid attention more to that than the numbers on the scale. Because the scale can be deceiving. You can be losing weight. Numbers just don't go down. Do you, do you still have those belts? I don't. I, I was on um, on our group on facebook that we're in i was just remarking that um one of our members was taking pictures in his old shirts and holding his belts and stuff 
as I went along and lost the weight, I would clean out my closet and donate it. Yeah. I was just like, this plan on getting fat again. That was the, the mindset behind it. Where before I used to keep the stuff, like I'd have some concert shirts that I really liked the band. And I was like, didn't want to give them up, even though I they were like a dress on me now. Yeah. I was like, I'll eventually cut those out and like sew them on the back of a jacket or something. I, I just started, you know, realizing that that was just myself planning on getting fat again in a way, you know yeah. what I mean? So instead of saving any of those clothes, I was just purge closet like uh, once a month and then take it and donate it to Goodwill. And I really regret that now. I wish I would have saved something at my biggest so I could have done that. You could go and buy a, a big shirt now, see what it feels like being your size, buying a, you know, 4X or whatever. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I probably should do a video, a carry that weight video and um, go to a store and like videotape myself in clothes that I used to fit into. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. That'd be good. Get, get a whole outfit, get a suit. Put on a suit that, from that size, three piece suit. Um, as I lost weight, I would go to Goodwills and buy suits, just like r- really ridiculous suits. You know, if I I find like pink suits and yeah, <laughs> and stuff like that, and uh, that it was really fun. But then it's like as I would lose weight, I couldn't wear them anymore, so I had to don't you know just get rid of them because they became look uh, you know like it looked like kid wearing daddy suit <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great you mentioned the bipolar a little bit you mind if we talk on that i'm very open about that one. let's talk like i know you said that the depression led into eating and emotional eating but so like one thing that i'm working on now is my mental health i feel like my mental health is just as important if not more important than my you know my weight loss and all that because before i would just get in this mindset to where all right i just gotta eat less, move more, restrict my calories, be fine. But in my mind, I've got anxiety, depression. I'm a binge eater, emotional eater, all that. And I would never work on that stuff. I would just correct my, my eating and well, I wouldn't even correct it. I would just restrict and be horrible. But how, how important do you feel like that, that mental health aspect of it is compared to your physical health? Uh, Mental health is very important. I mean, I think that it's it's equally, if not more important. Um, I know that when my mental health is doing well, my physical health is doing well, for the most part. Sometimes my mental health is doing well because I'm focusing on other hobbies like comic things are going well with that. Um, then like uh, I start making bad decisions with my health. So I have to keep uh, there's there's one thing I try and practice mindfulness and just uh, just observe and and um, be aware of how I'm behaving and what my my mental states are like. Uh, I find that the more regular I am with exercise, the less anxious, and depressed I am. Every time I run after I'm run, I never feel as calm as I do after a run. So yeah. run really important. But because I'm I'm 42, I'm getting older. Um, it is kind of hard in the joints, so I only run twice a week. Um, we would really like to get back to hitting the uh, heavy bag. I was really into boxing training, but um, I have a torn rotator cuff, so I was told to avoid doing that, and I really miss it. But that was good for the cardiovascular too, and it was good for mental. Because if you um, think about it, you know, just how much pent up aggression you can get. Uh, and going out to the garage and hitting that bag, it just releases a lot of that aggression, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's a uh, very important part of the journey. I, I spent a good portion of um, this journey depressed and a good portion of it in, in mania. And when I'm in mania is when I am super focused and rigid on my, uh, workout routines i i'm religious with things i have rituals and routines i stick to and i do them and i write about them and i do the carry that weight videos and stuff like that but then like if i start having depression it's hard that's how it was with me um imposter syndrome and all that comes into play for me so like the the depression will happen and then it's like well you're you're not good enough anyways 
So I just yeah, keep digging that, that, that hole that I'm in with, with my depression, my anxiety. I, I, I try to talk about it a lot on the show because well, one, I don't know. Did you listen to my interview with Adam, the admin from our, I group? Did. yeah. So the, the thing is, is like, uh, and even Joe, I talked about it with Joe too. Um, men, you know, we're supposed to be men. We're not supposed to share our emotions and our feelings and stuff. So I try to normalize it as much as possible, make it okay to talk about, because like, you know, if, if my dad was still alive and he heard me talking about this, I'm being a sissy, you know, I, I just try to make it because one talking about it helps me a lot, you know, get through all my issues. And I just definitely, I want to encourage others to do that. I, I come from the same school of thought. Uh, and I also uh, have, uh, an adversary to, um, toxic masculinity. I, uh, you know, being that I was a big guy most of my life, I often felt inadequate because I didn't have the strength of a big guy. I've never been an athletic person in my life. I've always just kind of been, uh, into music and arts, never ever did any sports in my life. And so therefore I'd never been very athletic. And so, like, every time I would try and get on this journey and I'd start doing the weightlifting portion of it, I could never lift what my peers could lift. And that toxic masculinity, just, it, it, it can kill you. It can kill your motivation. It can make you feel like um, you're not good enough. You're not adequate. You're not um, living up to the same standards that your peers are. And it was hard on me. And it wasn't until recently. And I, I, I'm almost feel embarrassed to admit this, that in my forties, I started realizing, you know what, we're all individually are uniquely our own selves. And we need to just start where we start. Everyone starts somewhere. And I just put that ego aside and I started lifting lower weights and just small, slowly, and gradually raising it you know I, I i don't know i like it actually i wrote down that start where we start it's a simple statement but it's that's that's got some meaning i love it what kind of uh tips would you would you give out to somebody that's you know 350 pounds just starting off you know miserable like like we were i would say find one habit to either make or break do that for a week two weeks, three weeks, however long you feel like it takes you to make that habit. For instance, like for me, it was getting out and walking every day. I made a point to make sure I got out every single day, rain or shine. Uh, I found a way to get in, in my 10,000 steps. Um, and then once that becomes solid, you move on to the next thing. Just then maybe take a, a, a little bit of focus on your diet and just pick one thing. I'm not going to have this anymore. Or I'm only going to have fast food once a week. And, uh, you know, really try and stick to it. And when you stumble, because you will, forgive yourself and get back right on tra track that day. Or, or if you can't, if you feel like you just can't muster up that day, get on track for tomorrow. Wake up tomorrow with intention. As corny as it is, telling yourself mantras can really help. Like waking up with intention. So you wake up for the day and you say, today is going to be a great day. Uh, I'm going to do, you know, set some small goals. I, today I'm going to get out and I'm going to walk three times today. Today I'm going to get down on the ground and I'm going to do five push-ups. Maybe tomorrow I'll do six push-ups. Maybe tomorrow I'll do seven. You know what I mean? You yeah. just always have goals in mind. Goals are so important. And you got to make sure the goals are not too easy, but not too hard. I'd almost err on the side of too easy. So that way you're, you're at least getting those little wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like uh, if you set off to say, I'm going to lose five pounds this month. Five pounds is so doable. You'll probably lose five pounds. If you put in an effort, you'll probably lose five pounds in a week. Yeah. So if you set those small goals and then you smash that small goal and you set another small goal, you smash that one you just gonna it's just gonna be um a snowball of win 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 over and over to the point where 
you feel unstoppable. That was the word that came to my mind, unstoppable. Yeah, it just becomes uh, almost an obsession. Some of your friends and family may become concerned that, like, uh, you know, you need to take it easy. You got to have fun sometimes, and you do. You definitely do. But if you're you got your eye on the prize and you feel like you're winning and you're setting those goals, just keep going. Just keep going because it's gonna the reward will outweigh the you know inconvenience in the end. Uh, one thing I would really, I like to try and stress to people every time about weight loss when I talk to them about it is um, this is not a temporary inconvenience to get you where you want to, you feel like you need to be. Diets and exercise are not a temporary inconvenience to get you where you want to be. Yes, it'll get you where you want to be, but you can't just say, all right, I hit the finish line. I'm done. That's something I missed over and over in my life. I would get down, I'd get my weight down, and then the next thing you know, I'd be doing fat fuck things again, and I'd gain all the weight back. Yep. So it's like constant maintenance. So uh, just keep your eye on the prize and realize that it's not a it's not a band aid. It's it's a lifestyle change. Yeah, and that that goes with like how I I said like with the mental aspect of my journey. You know, before I would just say, all right, let's let's eat less let's move more let's get it done and then as soon as i got to that spot where i'm like hey i feel good this is good let's go eat three pizzas to celebrate you know because i'm fixed now yeah yeah that was that was my issue like i my story you know i've lost over 400 pounds the past seven years but i can never keep it off so like losing the weight's one thing but maintaining it is another and it was i i you know i have to i still have to learn how to do that proper well, I will. I don't come from the the school of thought that you can't have those binges anymore, or you can't uh, indulge. And I indulged the whole way through my my weight loss. It's just I would get really focused because honestly, I feel like if you become too strict and you restrict yourself and say I can't have fast food again or I can't have cake again, I can't. You're, you're gonna give in. You're just yeah. gonna give up. So if you just have those bad splurge days and then you get back on track right away. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I just, that's sometimes I would, uh, you know, people don't advise uh, on this, but um, sometimes I would, if I knew it was going to uh, splurge, I would fast. That's what I did this Friday, honestly, I, I, I knew I was going to have pizza for dinner and wings and so i just fasted until dinner time and i ate my wings first so i made sure i got my protein in first and then i eat the, the, you know yeah and then I, I get back on track you know what i mean then like the rest of this week i'll be uh eating quality foods yeah and i'll be exercising every day but i just let loose on the weekend it's not easy uh um to to find that balance but if you can it's i think i think it's important to do something that you know like you still treat yourself you still have a little bit of fun but you still are um very mindful of your health for the most part i call it like a um 80 20 uh have you ever heard that it's like 80 percent of the time you're you're on point with your diet and exercise and stuff and then 20 percent you just do what you want yeah yeah that's the way I look at it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience, right? So um, I would, before I would always be super strict on my diet. And then I talked about it in one of my episodes where we went to a birthday party and my wife's like, just have a piece of cake, just have a piece of cake. It's just a piece of cake. You you know, it's a birthday party. You, you have to have cake. And in my mind, how I was thinking was the moment I take a bite of that cake, the six months that I just worked my ass off is over. Yep going on the forgiveness as well. I interviewed a, um, a lady, Lindsay, Leslie, Lindsay Davis, excuse me. And she talked a lot about forgiveness of yourself. And like, I almost broke down when she was doing that because like, there's a lot in me that I, I need to forgive myself for that. It, it's so hard to do for me anyways. Like, it's just, wow. You know, I, I know I deserve it, but it it's hard. Yeah, no, I get that. I can identify with that that very story you know i would i remember times 
where I'd be dieting hardcore and I would be the same way. I'd be like, I'm going to be super strict. I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to do that. And then we'd go to family reunions or we'd go to birthdays or we'd go to after a funeral out to eat and people would have things and I'd just be like, no. And I would be miserable. Yeah. That's really no way to live. I mean, it's like I, I could have a piece of that cake. I could have a smaller piece and, and just still enjoy it. Um, and a lot of times I just chose to suffer and that suffering just became too much. And that's what would make me give up. Yeah. So that's why this around, I look at it as like, this is a lifelong journey. I'm going to have my bad stuff along the way, but I'm going to try and live, uh, you know, fairly clean the other days. But every once in a while, I will challenge myself to like this whole month, I'm going to eat super clean. And when I do that, then I get really lean. Um, and then I take pictures and then, and then after the words, I have a celebration and yeah. have some ice cream. Well, I, I did an interview with a, uh, a guy who he's now he's the world champion in the transformation bodybuilding category. And he talked about that. He's like, you know, these, these bodybuilders that are super clean, you know, like percent, small percent of body fat, they only look like that for a week. They bust their ass for all this time. They eat clean they get their pictures taken they do their competition and then it's over because your body doesn't want you to to stay at that forever yeah i've never gotten that lean uh, my scale it says i'm at like 20 percent body fat but i feel like from the pictures the progress pictures my wife takes of me i feel like my scale is off yeah. <laughs> it just the uh, um, my abs are far more visible than someone of 20 percent body fat yeah I was going to point that out, like seeing like your abs and stuff. How do you, uh, how does that make you feel coming from the 320? I cried, honestly. I, uh, one day, like I was sometimes, honestly, like throughout my life, I avoided mirrors because I just didn't want to, I didn't want to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, when I'm going through depressions, even at this way, I avoid mirrors. I get out of that depression. And it was at the end of one of those depressions. I had came in from a workout. I took my shirt off and just the lighting just hit right. And I saw my abs in the mirror and I like, they were so defined. And I was like, I, I always dreamed. I always dreamed of this, but I never thought it would ever come. You know, I have always told, I've been told by a lot of people, well, abs, are you know made in the kitchen and i'm honestly my my diet needs to be cleaner than it is and so it was surprising and like just overwhelming when i saw it and i and i cried i um uh, i'm a big baby i cried a bit. <laughs> that's okay me too yeah i'm not afraid to or ashamed to admit it i'm a pretty much an open book i i treat my facebook like a uh, a journal and i journal a lot um, openly and I, I sometimes I worry about what people might think but then in the end it's like it's a lot more freeing to not have secrets <laughs> yeah same thing for me right so like I'll I'll do episodes where I binge and I'll talk about it and I'll talk about my mess ups and I hate doing that but I, I think about it you know there's somebody like if there's one person out there that's struggling with the same thing and I can give them a little bit of guidance or if I can share with them that it's okay you know, like it's going to be all right. Like that makes the difference. So uh, that's the same thing with yours. Like I, I binge watched your, your Facebook and I went through and I was looking at all these different videos and it's, I mean, you're, you're definitely an inspiration, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you, you got to come on here. I'm, I'm super excited that I got to come out and see you do your work live. You know, like that was, that was great. And I, I plan on doing it again, taking my wife out. So awesome. Yeah. I know we're getting close to our, our time here. Is there anything that you want to talk about that we didn't touch on? Uh, I can't really think of anything in particular, honestly. Um, I did want to talk about the mental health and we did talk about that a little bit. So where can people find you if they, uh, they want to look you up? I know I mentioned carry that weight and stuff, but um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, wherever. Um, Instagram. I am on Facebook and I um, have a YouTube thing. I need to do more with it. Um, I also um, am also I'm on uh, Fitbit as carry that weight as well. And it's K-E-R-R-Y carry that weight because my first name's Carrie. And um, yeah, the, uh, 
all it's the same across the board facebook instagram fitbit and um youtube carry that weight yeah i mentioned i watched the video on your youtube the little trailer you did for like your addiction i I was why i was like oh my god this is this is intense this is amazing and then yeah like i said when i seen you you were like oh i just did it and you got to finish that for me uh yeah i would like to kind of go uh into a story about my upbringing and stuff yeah i mean i think uh, honestly i think that upbringing basically has a lot to do with the reasons people are uh, are you know become big uh like if uh your family has a tendency to lean towards food in times of Mm -hmm. struggle that's i think that's where it came from for me no that that makes a lot of sense i would uh like to yeah i i should i should definitely finish that video sometime but i just i don't know i i I like uh preparation (laughs) like i can't um i can't organize due to my bipolar disorder it just kind of makes me 80. Well, when it when it does get finished, it'll be great. One thing I've been doing is I've been asking my guests for uh, recommendations. It can be anything in the world. It doesn't have to be on topic. It can be on topic. It can be talking about a TV show or go watch your, your favorite stand-up comedian live. Right. Um, yeah, I, will, uh, I have a few suggestions. Um, if you struggle with anxiety and uh, depression and um, social anxiety, all those type of things that uh, makes you want to turn to food and stuff, I suggest practicing mindfulness and meditation. Uh, there's an app called Insight Timer. It's free. They have a lot of guided meditations. They have um, just noise that you can listen to in the background. Uh, they have like monks chanting. <laughs> I tend to listen to that, meditate and stuff. But it does definitely help slow your your body down, you know, and, and slow your mind and make you calmer. Uh, I think that's a great tool to have in your tool belt when you're on this journey, because there will be times where um, you know things get rough, and when, if you can just slow your mind down and become a little bit more in the present moment, it, you can get through it better and without turning to food. Um, I suggest listening to podcasts like yours, joining Facebook groups that are weight loss support groups for men or, or just for anyone. It doesn't have to be for men. I like the, that our group is just for men um, just because I think it gives, it opens a door for men to feel like they can be a little bit more vulnerable. They don't have to be macho in front of women. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I, it's, like we're excluding women it's i think to to give that platform of you can this is a safe space you can be open you know yeah i that i do the overeaters anonymous i think i talked to you about it when we met i might have brought it up um and my favorite meetings to go to on zoom are the men's only because i okay. you know i feel um like you said like i just i i get I'm less embarrassed to share in front of just men. It's weird. Right. Like you said, like, I feel like I have to be a a manly man in front of women and it's hard to even share my feelings. So that men's group that we're in, I'm going to share it again. I've shared it before. Um, I'll post a link in the description that for those that are interested. I think that group is just, it's great. I mean, yeah, there's a occasional, drama that happens on there but uh, i mean overall it's uh it's a very supportive very um good tool uh, mm-hmm. like there's a, there's a lot of great trainers on there and there's people that just give good resources and good advice it's uh i've made so many friends on that site uh, i've only been on there for, for about uh eight i think eight months something like that yeah I, i've I'm friends with a number of you guys and i'm really thankful for that yeah i've done like i think this is my fifth interview out of there like you said the drama and stuff adam the admin he uh he's pretty quick to it when he uh when there's something going on he'll he likes that Definitely. that band hammer for those uh those obnoxious trainers that are jumping your inbox <laughs> right well anything else for a recommendation 
I've been, uh, I listened to uh, the um, book on tape or book on CD or book on whatever MP3 um, uh, called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I, I strongly suggest that. Um, I've listened to it twice now. Uh, it's just uh, basically about like figuring out priorities in your life and not worrying about all the other extra and background noise. And um, it was a really good, cause I have this tendency to overthink things and think people don't like me and just put a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of attention and um, detail into negative things that I don't need to. And that book was very helpful. They have it on YouTube right now for free. So I've got it wrote down. I'm definitely going to check it out. And if you're in the heavy metal too, uh, and you want to check out my band, we're on band camp. It's the uh, summer, like the season dying as in like, ah, I'm dying, summer dying. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, uh, I was in that band for like four years and we put out several albums. We put out two full albums and uh, we had a demo and uh, we did a little EP right before we broke up. And those are all on band camp. All right. Well, uh, if you're cool with it, I'll share that in the description as well. So if somebody wants to find it, they can click the link. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Awesome. Well, Carrie, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, you know, congrats on your loss. Like yeah. you're you're killing it, dude. Uh, you look amazing. Like you're, Thank you said the abs and just just keep it up, dude. I, I appreciate you and uh, I had a good time. Yeah, I did too, man. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I truly appreciate the opportunity. And uh, I hope to see you at one of the shows again sometime. Carrie, dude, I cannot wait to see you again. I, I had a blast when I went and I watched your show. Uh, like I told you, it was my first time going to watch stand-up comedy. It was perfect. Between you and the, the rest of the guys and gals that did the stand-up, it was, it was amazing. I loved it. For those of you that are interested in following Carrie's journey on Carry That Weight, I will post all his locations in the description of this episode. His Fitbit, his band Summer's Dying, his Instagram, all that stuff, it'll be posted in the show notes. So check him out, give him a follow. He's got great content and a great story, as you just heard. If you enjoyed this episode, please go over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a rating and a review. I would appreciate it so much. And if you know somebody that could benefit from this episode, share it with them. Share it on your Facebook. Send it to a friend or a family member. Just please share it for me. It would mean the world. Don't forget to check out my website, www.lukeloserspodcast.com, or call the loser line, 323-920-LUKE, or 5853. The music that we're hearing right now is by Jake Simmons and the Little Ghosts check them out i will post their links in the description of this episode as well so that is that as always stay positive do the work trust the process and i will see you next week Baby.